Are you looking for an issue log template? Well, if that's the case, then you've come to the right place because today I'm gonna to be sharing with you an issue log that I've created and been using for multiple years. I've been refining as I go and I've landed on this optimized version. Before I actually show you exactly how to build this issue log from scratch, I do just want to quickly mention that I have made this template available for download. Now, if you click on the first link in the description, you'll be able to pick up this template. It's all optimized for you, it's all formatted, uh, and you won't need to build it yourself. Um, bear in mind, it does come at a bit of a cost. It's I've priced it as cheap as I can, around the cost of a cup of coffee. Um, but it will enable you to save yourself a little bit of time and it will also support this channel. So if you did proceed, I do appreciate that as well. But with all that said, let's go on to actually building this template just in case you've got a little bit of time uh, and you wanted to create this yourself. So first and foremost, you need to open a new Excel book and or it could be a number if you're working on Mac or it could be something like Google Sheets. Essentially, you need a tool for spreadsheet functionality. Now, the first thing that I always recommend is that you include uh, a title of everything, um, well, exactly what the document is right at the top. So I've put issue log template, you may just want to remove template, you may even want to put the project name, so you could put project A issue log as an example. You could do that, but I'm just gonna put this in for now. Also bear in mind, I'm gonna get this built as soon as possible, and as quickly as I can, the formatting won't completely mirror the template that I just showed you and that I will that I have made available via that link. Um, but I just want to, you know, you can work on the formatting in your own time, but I'm going to provide you with the basis and I'll try and replicate as far as I can, but I don't want to delve too deep just to ensure that we get this built nice and quickly. So next, I would suggest that you include kind of a, a key area at the top that has some core information uh, pertaining to the project. So I always like to include a project name, even a project description as well, who the project manager is, uh, a project start, and a project end date is all, always good as well. Um, I missed off uh, date on that one. You could even include a duration column, or, or section I should say, uh, but with that, you know, um, for instance, let me just walk you through it. If you had duration, you could have something like equals days, you could put a formula in and you could put something like this, uh, comma this, and that's just going to have a total for you. So it just gives you that, that number without having to maybe run that calculation. So it's useful to have. At this point, I would bold these. I would probably put these in a, at a light gray, and then I would put all of the borders in as well, just to differentiate and show that this is a content area. Uh, and this is exactly where the, uh, yeah, the boxes will go. So let's just put that in like that. Uh, I will be re removing grid lines later. We've got them in just to help us create this template, but we will move uh, onto that in due course. Now at this stage, I would recommend that you put in uh, a, a an area to total um, your uh, statuses and priorities. And I'll show you why shortly. As you saw on the template, we're gonna have some graphics. Um, and that's going to be really, really useful for getting a, for anyone who's opening this up and wants to see exactly uh, the status of all of the issues. So I would recommend a four column table, uh, statuses, statuses total, or status total, priorities, and priority total. So we're creating a little table at the top. And I do recommend, as I say, doing this first and you'll soon see why. So we've got in progress, and then we've got close. So these are the three typical statuses. You could have more, you could have things like on hold, those kinds of things. Uh, but I'm gonna keep this nice and simple for now. I'm gonna put low, medium, and high. And we're gonna revert back to this later to set up the formulas. Uh, as for now, uh, I don't, well, we don't know what columns we're gonna build it in yet, so it wouldn't make sense Just put some, uh, some border around it. I'll leave some space here for those graphics. Now onto the issue log itself. What I would essentially do here is I will, I'll actually just create, I'm actually just gonna create the columns first and then we'll move on to the formatting. So these are the ones I would recommend and I'll just walk you through each one. So issue number, each one will have its own unique reference. This will be like one, two, three, four, five, etc. Issue description will, as the name suggests, just delve deeper. It will give you an area to basically provide more context onto said issue. We will have a status here. Um, and at this point, what we can do is you can do this for as many rows as you like. You could do it for the entire column if you wanted. 
bear in mind it may be a drop down here, but we're going to put a drop down in here. So I'll just do it for these five cells for now, just to show you the, uh, the functionality. Select these five cells. We're then going to go to data and we're going to click on data validation, data validation. We're going to click list. And in the source, we're going to go back to that table we just created and we're going to select these three here. Make sure the dollar signs are all in, they should be. Press OK. And now this is a drop down. So it won't be on any other cells because I only did it to this particular cell reference. But this is a drop down. And now we have these statuses up here. So let me just plug some in just to show you. Uh, and then we're going to have priority. Essentially, we're going to do the same thing in this one. So let's just do select those five. Um, make sure those five are selected. Data, data validation list or we'll select list from the drop down there source um we're going to do priorities now what you can also do uh just to let you know is you could type in as an example you don't have to, you don't have to have the table at the top you could do something like this so one option comma next option third option comma and it will work in exactly the same way uh but i think because i've already built the table and likely the chances are you're going to want that as well uh, i will just show you how to do that so the source is I left click in K3 and I drag down to K7 and I press OK. So now I've got priority. Assignee, so who is assigned uh, to this um, particular issue? Raised by, because that can be different. You know, who raised it and who's assigned to it can be very, very different. You might actually want them the other way around, but it doesn't really matter. Open date, so when was the issue opened? Uh, close date, when was it closed? and additional comments. So you want somewhere to store any extra comments pertaining to the issue uh, in there as well. Now it's on to formatting. So I'm gonna select all of them, press bold. I'm gonna put them in that nice gray we selected earlier. And then I'm going to just select all of this. Uh, sorry, select all of this. And then we'll just put borders around it for now. And then we can get into changing the um, column widths by going up to the columns and when you get to see that little signal you can double left click and basically what that does is it just makes the column as wide as it needs to be. Um, so yeah you can do that. You might even want to move this because as an example you might want this to be a little bit more more concise. So you might want to move that across because we want the additional comments. Uh, I might go one more actually. I want the additional comments column as an example to be a little bit wider and that looks a bit silly on the table. So you could do that. So yeah, that's the, the, the core of the issue log. It's a matter of just updating it now. You've got yourself your template um, and really we just need to create, or if you wanted to, the um, the graphics if you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, actually let me just plug these in first. I've just noticed I need to set up the formulas. So I'll show you how to do that. So status total. So equals uh, sum, open bracket, No, equal sum, sum if, sorry, a bit rusty, sum if that is that. Make that count if. Sorry, got there in the end. Equals count if. So equals count if. So what this is basically saying is equals, so count, um, count count if this criteria is met, if you see what I mean. So the range here is just the, the five issues we've got in our issue log. Uh, so yeah, that's essentially what we're doing. Hopefully that makes sense. I didn't kind of made that too confusing by my incorrect formulas at the start. So if I was to change this to closed as an example, that should ping to one and that go down to two, exactly. So now we just need to do the same here. So equals count if, so count if you select the range, so the range will be the priority column. And you might even want to select the entire column here, actually. That's probably better. So E, uh, semicolon E, comma, criteria will be low. So you can just select that there. Close bracket and then drag that down. So now we have the count. So basically, if someone wants to add more lines here, more issues, obviously I've not added the uh, data validation the whole way down. But if you were to put that, in, if I just typed in high then, as an example, that will, that will basically populate again. You see, hopefully you can see here, this is just going up. Exactly. And that's why it's good to have a drop down here, because if you were to spell it wrong, you know, high, it works. But if you put, you know, 
one high, just a typo, um, it didn't count it, you see? So that's why drop down works really, really well there. Let's just remove this quickly for the formatting purposes. Uh, delete that. Now, we, let's, we can build our graphics and we build our graphics based on this. So the first thing I would do is I'd select the statuses. So we're gonna build the status graphic first. So select um, not started through to one or F4 through to G6. We are going to go uh, insert. We are going to go recommended charts. Now, these are the ones that are recommended. We could do any of these, but I think the pie chart works particularly well. Press OK. And we have this chart. So there's loads of different formatting options here. Look, you can change exactly how it looks. Um, and yeah, let's just go for that one for now. And then we could just call this, we could just call this status overview. And now someone can see that, you know, 40% of our, uh, of our issues aren't started, if you like. 40% are in progress and 20% are closed. So yeah, if you wanted to change that formatting, we click off, if you click back on, if you click chart design, then you can do that. So that's actually quite a nice one. So there you go, there's our status overview. And then let's just build the other one. So click low through to one, insert recommended charts. You don't have to click recommended charts, you could click on one of these as well. Um, but I've just done that just for simplicity. Press okay, make it roughly the same size. You could also select this, copy it and press control V and then change the data source. But um, yeah, I haven't done that as you can see. Uh, now I need to try and find the same one. Uh, which one was it? Was it that one? No. So I can't actually find it. So that's, I'll show you how to do that copy and paste because actually that, that can save that issue. Control C, Control V. So let's move this over here. We're gonna change this to priority overview and then here left click we need to click on uh, where is it it's somewhere here right click sorry right click and then it's format uh, select data and then what we want to do is change that range you can see the range is selected here we want to change that to this so left click h4 through to i7 press ok and hopefully that has now worked yes it has 60 percent so there you go that's how to create an issue log I hope this video has been useful uh, and you've now got an issue log that you can use. Oh, actually, let's turn off the grid lines. Click view, grid lines, and there you go. It's all finished. So this issue log is now ready. So yeah, I hope this video was useful. If it was, please hit the like button. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. If you do want to pick up this template and not have to build this out from scratch, then there's that link in the description below. Uh, and do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And with all that said, I hope you have an excellent day.